I want us all to be on the same wavelength this afternoon in terms of what we're trying to do and why we're doing it and nearly everything, well virtually everything that I'm going to say is either relevant directly to the hypotheses that we're testing that you'll be doing the measurements for or that it's relevant to your work on rivers in a wider scale you know we're out here today looking at a river valley and we're trying to see what does this river valley teach us about rivers so this is a classic case study example and it's one of the reasons for coming here isn't it that this is a river that is going to be pretty much like the textbook but no river is exactly like the textbook it has its own local characteristics so as we're going down we'll be measuring things getting actual statistical evidence what type of evidence do we call that yeah primary evidence good but I was also thinking this words beginning with Q quantitative good this is the statistical evidence that we're going to get but we're also going to use our eyes we're also going to be describing things and we're going to be seeing how the valley changes as we go down not only the characteristics of the channel but the characteristics of the cross section and the cross section especially in drawing field sketches and just describing what we're seeing and trying to explain what we see is going to be relevant as well as just collecting the quantitative data the, the statistics so that's what we're going to do and of course putting what we're saying and what we discuss and what we see into some sort of note form nobody's got brilliant memory they need to write down what it is they're seeing what we discuss so that you can at some stage write it up into a decent account of what this valley is to teach us <coughs> so that's what we're aiming to do this afternoon uh, and how successful it is obviously depends on how willing you are to get yourself involved in it okay this first bit and mostly when I stop and talk to you is making sense of the quality side of it you'll be collecting the data and this first bit here is coming into that category because this inspiring sp space is quite significant for this river because what is happening here yeah this is the source and you know it, it's no great plaque is it, it the source of but every big river the Amazon the Thames has something like this somewhere which is going to be one of its hundreds of sources and this is one of the so this eventually ends up in which river which big river in Britain does this end up in yeah this is one of the sources of the River Severn one of the tributaries of the River Severn and all over this catchment area and way back up into Wales you've got th situations like this where the Severn is collecting its water do you know what, we, what is happening here what is this source what are we looking at look around you here compare this bit where we are to everything around us it's lower it's a hollow isn't it so what we're looking at here descriptively is a hollow and in this hollow what is happening can I just borrow that what is happening hey okay. it's yeah there's a huge collection of water <laughs> where did it go about that deep so that's a meter so it's three quarters of a meter deep this and it's like a huge sponge collecting water from where yeah from the sky just as a spot lands on the head um, and where else though yes it rains and some will directly land in this hollow yeah from the surrounding area all around in the surrounding area which is fairly flat this is the top of the long mind high but flat so I could describe it as a plateau 
and on that plateau we've got this sort of uh, bracken, heather, not many trees on top, if any on the top is there. And that acts as a huge collection and it's, most of the rain will sink in and work its way through the hydrological cycle. You've, just, you've done all about your hydrology and infiltration into the soil and so on. And it will be slowly making its way to a place like this. And this is what we call a spring sapped hollow. And that the water is, from all around, is making its way towards this lowest point and it comes out as a spring and in that spring because it's a wet environment we get this stuff what is it what is all this stuff what, what do we what do we call this what's this stuff yeah it's this moss it's like a bog of spongy sphagnum moss and it is a huge sponge and within it of course you get these things as well reeds and, you know, you just got to use your common sense if ever you're walking up in the mountains. You don't go and walk straight through a place like this because it's boggy. You get yourself stuck, potentially. Stick to the higher ground. And, and the vegetation reflects it, doesn't it? Just behind us, what's that sort of darker stuff there? Yeah, that's your heather. And most of this is heather around here. This looks very pretty at certain times of the year. But this is the source of your stream. And it's not particular, I've seen it a lot wetter than this, considering we've had such a wet winter. It's not particularly boggy and spongy here. So it'll be interesting to see how much water there is actually in the stream. Okay, have I forgotten anything? Um, grid on the map. Oh yeah, grid references on the map. Where actually are we on your map? Find yourself on the, on the map. It's a place called Boiling Well, yes, it's local. This particular spring is called Boiling Well. So if you can find Boiling Well on your uh, map, and then really a six-figure grid reference to locate the notes we've just made. So this is your Boiling Well. It is the spring-sapped hollow at the source of the stream in Ashes Hollow.